Hey everyone, so today I'm going to talk about the Royal Variety Performance which was on last night and it is an annual event. And I will be honest, I've never really sat and watched the entire thing the whole way through. If you've seen some of my other videos, you will know that only recently over the past year or so, maybe past year and a half, I've become basically obsessed with stand-up comedy. So the reason I watched the Royal Variety Performance mainly was to see the stand-up comedy side. Um, but I've got to say, I am pleased I watched it. I did enjoy the other the other acts, the other performances. Um, and I think I'll definitely watch it next year. So I've just written down a list of my favourite acts. So I'm just going to go through them all briefly and say what I thought. And I'd like you to post comments and things and see if you agree. Um, I've got to say, there's only about three or four performances missed off the list. So it is quite a big list. Um, I will try not to go to them all in too much detail. Because we will be here forever. Um, okay, so it was opened by Kylie Minogue with her latest single, I cannot remember what it's called. But I thought that was a really, really great way to open it. Fantastic song, really great performance. Um, I really enjoyed that, yeah. And then Michael McIntyre came out and it's hosted by Michael McIntyre this year. You guys know I love Michael McIntyre. It's weird, you never call people by their first name. Like I never say I love Michael. But anyway, I absolutely adore him. I thought he was fantastic the whole way through. Very, very, very funny, as you'd expect. And just a true... A true gem to the show Um, it wouldn't have been the same without him I don't think because he did break up slightly boring bits with some good humour so that was quite nice and um, Paloma Faith came on with somebody else who I don't know who that was but she sang a song she sang Lola and um, really good performance I adore um, I, I adore Paloma completely so that was really quite enjoyable and then Spellbound came on of course Spellbound were the winners of this year's Britain's Got Talent and the thing about Britain's Got Talent the prize for the show is to get to perform at the Royal Variety performance which, let's be honest, I think most of the people who enter don't really care about the Royal Variety performance. I mean, it's not exactly a dream of mine to go on the Royal Variety performance, but if I had a... If my passion could be used on Britain's Got Talent, if I could actually go and audition for that show with my passion, I would. Sadly, I can't. I think somebody's already, <laughs> already actually tried, and they got booed quite a lot, so I'm not going to go and do that. But yeah, I'm not a fan of Spellbound. You guys know I don't really like them. I just don't think the class is a variety because there are so many people who can do that. I can't, granted, I'm not saying I can, but there are so many people who can do the sort of thing Spellbound does. It wasn't entertaining, it was kind of a dull act, not not really anything spectacular compared to what we've seen. Um, it's not as if they've saved the best till last. Will this be the last we see of them? I don't know. I hope so. Um, then Lee Mack came on. Tough crowd for Lee Mack. Not a lot of people laughed at him, but I think Lee Mack is great. I think he's very funny. Not his best performance, I will admit, but very good. And um, then Adele came on and sang. That was quite nice. And then we had a performance from Wizard of Oz. The kids section of it was really cute because I love seeing kids getting really passionate and involved in drama and um, creative activities and things. So that was great. Um, especially the key ones were really talented. Then um, Danielle came out as Dorothy and sang and things. And that was beautiful. Really, really well done. Really, really nice. Really good. Um, really nice to watch. And then after that, Endubs came on. I'm like, that's a really weird segue between the two. Um, but yeah, so Endubs, I do like Endubs. Not their biggest fan, but I like their music, so that was quite enjoyable, and I could put up with that. Then Russell Watson came on with some ballet dancers. The ballet dancers were distracting. I wasn't paying attention to what he was singing. Um, again, not a bad performance. It's obviously there to mix up the taste, but again, you've gone from Wizard of Oz to End Dubs to Russell Watson. I'm like, it doesn't quite work, does it? But it it helps it break it up and sort of makes it makes it less boring for people who maybe don't like one thing and then they like the rest. So that was okay. And then we had Sarah Milken came on, and when they said um, it's Sarah Milken, I was like, yay! Because I absolutely love, 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 love Sarah. I think she is fantastic, very funny. Even my mum laughed at her last night well laughed with her last night and my mum's not a stand up comedy fan so that really does tell you a lot about Sarah she is fantastic and then Susan Boyle came out and sang Perfect Day Susan Boyle you guys might know as a person I don't I'm not a fan I don't dislike her I just don't like her you know I wouldn't necessarily go and like go up to her in the street and speak to her if I met if I like saw her and walked past but I like her songs I like her voice and I like Perfect Day so that performance was beautiful and then Jack Whitehall came out, and again, that was really nice, because he's really funny. And then Cheryl Cole came on, and she sang The Flood. And it dawned on me at that point that her song's called The Flood, and so it's Take That Song. But yeah, so that was really great to see Cheryl there. Um, yeah. 
then um, Daniel Whiston, I think his name is, came out and did ice skating and we actually spotted that they weren't ice skates on his shoes, rightly so, because there wasn't going to be an ice rink on the stage. But they were just, they were rollerblades made to look like ice skates, which I thought was a bit of a con. But I mean, it's still impressive what he did and still really entertaining and I can't wait for the next Dancing on Ice either. And then Mickey Flanagan came out. Um, a lot of, in fact, the thing about the chicken kids, a lot of his material is recycled. Um, it's still funny. But if you've seen it, like if you've watched the clips a few times online and you've seen it quite a bit, it gets a little bit tedious because you're thinking, I know exactly what's going to come next. But it's still quite entertaining. Um, then there was the performance from Les Mis. Never seen Les Mis, don't really care about it. Don't really want to see it now either. The performance was about 10 minutes long. Longer than the finale bit, which I will talk about when I get to that. That was too, too long. Um, so that was probably the only bad, bad thing about it. I mean, there were performances I didn't really enjoy, but Les Mis took the biscuit with this one. Didn't like it. Then John Bishop came out. I'm not the biggest fan of John Bishop, because John Bishop's, whatever the TV programme he did ages ago about Britain, really dampened my, my spirits for him as a comedian, because it was not, not funny at all. Um, but it was okay. I laughed at a few things he said. He's still not my favourite comedian in the world. Never will be, I doubt. But it was still... I could watch it. And then we had the finale, or kind of the finale, um, Take That, and they sang The Flood, and then sang something else as well. And I, I do like that. Again, I'm not the biggest Take That fan. I don't have any of their albums. Um, I'm not going to buy any of their albums. I don't care about their concert. I don't care about watching their interviews or things. And I'm not a big Robbie fan either. I'm not, I'm not a fan of Robbie at all. But I did like the performance. I do like the songs, and that was enjoyable. And I think a really good way to end the... Um, Sure, obviously I am not an original Take That fan, so for me it doesn't have the sentiment. The whole Take That or Back Together with Robbie thing to me is like, so. But I've got to think of it as, it's like if the Spice Girls were to get back together, all five of them again. Yes, I know they did it three years ago, but that didn't work. But if they were, get, were to get back together and really actually meant that they were staying together again, I suppose it's that sort of thing for original Take That fans, I'm guessing. As I said, I, I don't know, I'm not them, I can't. Um, I can't really relate to them in that sense but I, I think if the Spice Girls were to get back together that would make a darn good finale for the show a lot of people might disagree with that because I know a lot of people are not like fans of them now after their last reunion because they were kind of rubbish but I think music has changed too much the younger generation want music that makes your ears bleed and the older generation aren't going to like that sort of music so I don't think that went well. But anyway, enough about the Spice Girls because it has nothing to do with this video. Um, and then we had the very end when they all sang the National Anthem and it was really weird seeing Cheryl stand on stage and sing the National Anthem with everybody else because it's so weird. Yes, she's done. She's obviously been in a group before. She was in Girls Aloud. Duh. Um, but it's just weird he seeing her sing but not being able to hear her sing because obviously you couldn't really single out any voice because there's so many of them on stage, the folk in the audience. Um all singing that yes so that was great and then it turned out the voiceover was tom baker i am so bad at spotting tom baker's voiceover as the doctor i've only seen him in a few things but i'm well aware of what he sounds like now from little britain because i love little britain um but then it came up in the credits voiceover tom baker i was like is it i mean if it said voiceover t voiceover david tennant and i hadn't noticed that it probably would have went and like jumped off of a bridge or something because i'd feel like such a bad person um, so I'm not too annoyed that I didn't know it was Tom Baker, but I'm still a little bit like, I should have got that. But he, he's everywhere. It's like, if it's not Peter Dixon, it's Tom Baker. It's going to be one of the two voiceovering something. But yeah, so there's my sort of brief overview, overview on the Royal Variety. This year it was Charles and Camilla. So I imagine next year it'll be the Queen, which I think would be quite interesting. I always think that most of the acts don't really appeal to the Queen or any of the royal family. You know, you don't expect them to laugh at these jokes like Michael McIntyre. You'd never expect them to go and sit through a Michael McIntyre performance, would you? So I don't really understand the whole concept of the royal variety, apart from the fact that it's for charity, as they keep going on about. Um, but yeah, there we go. So please feel free to leave comments and things and let me know your thoughts. I will probably do another royal variety performance video next year. Um, I'm try I hope Michael McIntyre's in it again next year. I hope Cheryl Cole will be in it again. I think she will be, providing that her career doesn't flop, providing she stays in the UK. Um, I imagine a lot of the same comedians will be in it. Um, but yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. So please feel free to leave comments and things and let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.